All right, so I want to go to uh, a couple passages here. I want to go to the book of Revelation. In, in Revelation, we're going to go to chapter 11. Excuse me, chapter 13. And it starts off, verse 1, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, on his heads a blasphemous name. Now, we can already identify that. That is a description of Leviathan, which we taught on earlier in this series. And we found that Leviathan equals the coming false messiah. Okay, the coming false messiah. And we have that uh, it describes, now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, in the mouth like the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. I saw one of his heads, as it had been mortally wounded, his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So here, let's talk about the false of Messiah a little bit. Let's develop this up. And let me erase this, and we're going to get some room here. Now, the false messiah is going to be over the Roman Empire. We already set that uh, down. And the Roman Empire is going to be our European nations. And we have the uh, European Union. We have, of course, there's going to be Great Britain. We're going to have France. We're going to have Germany. We're going to have uh, Greece, all your major players there. And uh, Spain and so forth, Portugal. And so uh, we have the false messiah is going to claim to be God. And the false messiah, in claiming to be God in Christianity, we have, he's over Christianity, just as his predecessors, the earlier Roman emperors, were over Christianity. The false messiah is, uh, it recognizes Jesus, as God. So, now, we have that uh, you are only allowed to worship God. But uh, a principal element of Christianity is the worship of Jesus. And so, when He requests that they worship Him, or He demands that they worship Him, the people think they're doing exactly what they've been doing all along. That they, and there's no change for them. It's the only change is that the Jesus that they've been waiting for has now arrived. And so he's able to manipulate the Scriptures because the people really haven't been taught. And they've been taught something that is a form of godliness, but it denies the power therein. And so we have that... Uh, so they worship the dragon. So the dragon is going to be the over the false messiah is going to be Hasatan. They worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, who is like the beast, who is able to make war with him. He was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, given authority to continue for 42 months. <coughs> and then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name. So he's literally going to claim to be Yeshua and to be Hashem. And so, I'm going to drop down. We have uh, verse 8. And all who dwell on the earth will worship Him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. And we're going to drop down to verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming out, up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. So, a lamb is a typical symbol within Christianity, and but he speaks like a dragon. So his power is not coming from Hashem, his power is coming from Hasatan. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. Now, before we go on, I just want to say one thing about the false prophet. In order for the false messiah to establish his credentials, He's going to have to claim, well, I was born in Bethlehem. 
He's going to have to claim, I was, I'm a descendant of David. He's going to have to claim, of course, that he is of Jewish descent. And we have a prophecy for this in Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 25, which says, O profane, wicked prince of Israel. It, it's the false messiah. And so he is going to try to convince people, I'm the Messiah because I fit the scriptural pattern. Well, Messiah has to have a prophet come before him. That's an Elijah. So this false prophet that's coming is a false Elijah. And so we have, he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence it causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he decrees those who dwell, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he has granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who is wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on the right hand and on their foreheads, and it goes on. So the false messiah has a false prophet who causes the people to worship him. He is going to command that the people build an image of the beast, and he is going to deceive the people by having the image appear to speak and breathe and do all these things, which to me, just watching what's coming out in the movies and watching out what's coming out in the game systems does not seem far-fetched. Our technology is reaching those capabilities right at this time. So we have uh, all of this. I'm submitting to you, and I hope to prove it, that this Abomination of desolation is going to be uh, set up by the false messiah 30 days before the false messiah makes entry into Jerusalem, walking in the literal footsteps of Yeshua. He's going to place this image there, and uh, all of these things are starting to occur.